Hi everyone, Donut here. You guys know how I'm always like, wait for the facts to come out before you form any kind of serious opinion or judgment. You know, facts, those important things, things that the media is supposed to wait on too, especially when it comes to sensitive racial issues that could lead to violence or hate, especially if you have lots of followers or, you know, you might write for a major news publication. You may have already guessed what this video is about based on the title because you're, you're my little investigators. This is Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett is an actor who you may recognize from the popular series, The Mighty Ducks. Why am I doing a video on him? Did he do a crime oopsie? Did someone do a crime oopsie on him? Maybe, just maybe. According to every journalist on Twitter, on January 29th, he was attacked by two white men who were wearing Make America Great Again hats who called him an F word with a hard T, an N word with a hard R, then poured bleach on him, then hit him a few times, then put a noose around his neck and said, this is MAGA country before fleeing. By every journalist, I mean writers from the New York Post, Newsweek, The Daily Beast, Philadelphia Magazine, Vibe Magazine, Nightline on ABC News, Forbes, Slate, LA Times, Buzzfeed, Reuters, Teen Vogue, Cosmopolitan slash Glamour Magazine, Rolling Stone, AP NBC News Writer, The Guardian, HuffPo, Washington Post, Vanity Fair, Fox 32, not to mention a lot of A-list celebrities and quite a few politicians. There were no allegedlies in any of those tweets either. It was all, this is what happened. So yeah, let's set the stage here. Downtown Chicago, it's negative 29 degrees out on the night that this happened. Two white dudes running around with MAGA hats on, carrying a noose and bleach, just looking for somebody to hurt. This story is already a HuffPo slash Vox slash BuzzFeed writer's wet dream. These are some juicy, juicy more that will generate a lot of clicks. What happened after the alleged attack? 40 minutes after the alleged attack, Jussie calls police. When they show up, he's still got the noose around his neck. Andy still had his Subway sandwich with him. Andy didn't want to cooperate with the police by giving them his cell phone. Andy refused to file a report at first. Let's look at the timeline. January 30th, the day after the attack, Chicago police sift through hundreds of hours of surveillance footage and find none that show the attack. Between January 30th and February 13th, the Chicago Police Department works tirelessly to figure out who the two perpetrators were. Finally, on February 13th, police take two men into custody who are related to the attack. Two men from Nigeria. Police obtained a search warrant for the apartment of the two brothers and they were released on February 15th without any charges being filed. February 16th. Police released a statement saying their investigation has shifted after speaking to the Nigerian brothers. They also said that they are eager to speak with Jesse's mullet again. So what did the brothers tell police to completely shift the scope of an investigation. According to several unnamed sources, CBS Chicago says Smollett paid the two brothers $4,000 to stage the attack against him. They said Jussie told them to go buy some red hats and some rope. They even said that they practiced the attack before it even happened. They stated that they flew to Nigeria the day after the attack to lay low, and when they came back, that's where police picked them up at, was the airport. Sources are stating that evidence and receipts were found inside the brothers' apartment that showed they bought the rope from a local hardware store, and the two red hats from a fashion store down the road. Another interesting receipt coming from the story is the supposed search warrant receipt leaked to the media. When a search warrant is executed, there's a receipt for everything found inside of the place that they executed the search warrant on. Every little thing and where that thing was located has to be cataloged by police when it's seized. A few notable items I'd like to point out on the search warrant receipt for the Nigerian brother's apartment are a magazine and a wallet with stamps. Why would police seize those? It just got really sunny in here. You guys are gonna have to deal with the widest guy on YouTube now. Now the sun just came out. Anyways, why do I think that it's important that there are stamps and a magazine on the search warrant receipt? So many people are focusing on this alleged racist MAGA attack that they forgot about an incident that happened a few days before the attack. The letter incident. The set of the popular TV show that Jesse is a part of, Empire, had to be evacuated after a suspicious letter was sent to the set. Hazmat team had to be called in. It was a big ordeal. The letter, which had the return address MAGA, also had a letter inside that was made out of magazine clipping. The letter said, you will die black, F word with a hard G. There was also a little picture of a man on a noose with a gun pointed at him. There was also a white powdery substance inside of the envelope, hence the hazmat crews having to be brought in, the set evacuated, but it turned out to be crushed up Tylenol. The attack is a really, really big deal, but I think this might be the thing that he really, really screwed up on if this is all a hoax. He messed with the United States Postal Service and got the FBI involved. I don't know if you guys realize it, but the United States Postal Service has a lot of reach and they have a lot of laws that they can really, really screw you on. They're really not to be taken lightly. You gonna, you recording this shit. All right. You recording like this I shit. said, bro, you disrespectful ass. Yeah, you disrespectful. 
So on top of pissing off the United States Postal Service, something that you definitely don't want to do, he may have also wasted thousands of hours of Chicago Police Department work time. CPD doesn't have anything else important to do though, right? Not like they had 2,962 shootings and 495 homicides by gun deaths last year. Anyways, they're gonna find out what happened here and there's definitely going to be some felony charges involved. Another little thing that I know this is the day after the Nigerian brothers were taken into custody, Jesse decides to do his first television interview since the incident happened. Yes, there's Grinder. Yes, there's Jack. Yes, there's all of these things, which I have not been on in years. So basically the guys who may have been paid to do this are arrested, taken into custody, and he decides to get on TV and cry a little bit and reassure everyone that it's a real thing. Why did you hesitate to call the police? There's a level of pride there. We live in a society. By all accounts, it looks like he staged every single bit of this. Let me say this though, CPD hasn't come out and said it's a hoax. There is no official statements on it yet. It's just all the evidence is kind of pointing that way. Also, according to reports, Jesse's mullet was willing to press charges on the two individuals that CPD had picked up until he found out it was the two brothers. Does this mean that if it was a hoax, he was willing to, to send two people to jail that CPD may have picked up? So what's next in this case? Reports today are stating that this is going to be going to a grand jury next week to decide if charges should be pursued. But wait, CPD said that the two brothers are not facing any charges. So who's facing charges? It's a big mystery and it's a big mess and I feel like someone may have wasted a lot of police time and pissed off the post office and led the FBI on a wild goose chase. But we'll see. In other news, Amazon has decided to test out their portable loot crates across cities in the United States and have unveiled their Chicago model. <laughs> Everyone, this is Donut. I will be streaming at 9 p.m. tonight. I would like to see all of you there. If you're a decent person, please try not to fake any racially charged hoax beatdowns today. Please have a fantastic day.